One of the more interesting and mysterious groups of people in Elden Ring are those who hail from Eochaid, a name I don't believe is ever heard in game dialogue. We primarily see the denizens of Eochaid in the form of Elmer of the Briar, who is also the bell bearing hunter, who uses a very unique arcane energy that is infused with his blades. The blades almost seem to be wielded with telekinesis, as Elmer and the bell bearing hunter can both throw their weapons for special attacks as well as manipulate the weapons from afar such as when initiating the infamous corkscrew attack. This ability has led many to dub those from Eochaid as the force users of Elden Ring. The seemingly telekinetic ability is confirmed with the regalia of Eochaid item description, reading, Treasured Sword of Eochaid, a lesser, long-banished domain. The copper coloration is not to be confused with rust, but is a conduit for its wielder to move it with their will alone. Swords of Eochaid dance through the skies. Whatever the copper coloration is on the blade, it truly does give those wielding the weapon the ability to move it with their own mind, even if they be a tarnished of no renown. I also just wanted to say real quick that if you've been enjoying any of my recent content, maybe you could consider dropping a like and subscribe if you feel so inclined, and let me know what else you'd like to see. Now, on to the rest of the video. The Regalia of Eochaid's item description may not reveal much about the mechanics of how they can manipulate particular weapons with their minds, though it does provide some insight into the land of Eochaid, though admittedly, it still isn't much. From this description, we know that Eochaid is a long-vanished lesser domain, though we aren't told whether or not this domain was outside the lands between, or simply a part of it that was conquered, likely by Merica and the Greater Will. The location of the Regalia of Eochaid, though, does suggest there were other nomads from Eochaid like Elamer, as graves can be found outside the cave where the sword can be retrieved. However, another item, the Briar Great Shield, describes the land of Eochaid as foreign, suggesting the land of Eochaid likely resided outside the lands between. The Great Shield also describes the people of Eochaid as being proudly solitary ascetics. They certainly seem fairly solitary, particularly as you never fight two of them at once, and few can even be found in the first place. Moreover, ascetic can be defined as being characterized by or suggesting the practice of severe self-discipline and abstention from all forms of indulgence, typically for religious reasons. The people of Eochaid being described as proudly ascetic is interesting, as it points to a religion that the people of Eochaid likely adhered to and perhaps have continued to practice in the lands between, despite the scorn and condemnation of others. Elmer of the Briar was slated to be executed for multiple murders, and seemingly chooses penance, as he continues to wear armor covered in briars. Whether Elmer broke tenets of his religion and is enacting self-punishment is difficult to determine, as he took control of the Shaded Castle prior to his execution, when he would have received the harshest punishment possible. Perhaps Elmer is actually afraid to die or has difficulty holding his faith. However, we are told the people of Eochaid are proudly solitary ascetics, suggesting Elmer was only willing to accept self-penance, remaining isolated within the shaded castle and covered in briars, all too aware of his own guilt. Eochaid is a word that derives from Old Irish meaning horse, which honestly doesn't seem to have too much significance based on available information. The more likely connections are still related to Celtic and Irish tales, as Eochaid is a fairly common name for mythical and historical kings, which we can draw a surface-level connection to Elmer whose name means noble or famous, which may be a hint at the inspiration of the character in his homeland. One of the more prominent Eochades in mythology is Eochaid son of Urk, who was a member of the Firbolg, a people that had left Ireland and had been enslaved by the Greeks and made to do hard labor before returning to Ireland, which could relate to the people of Eochaid and Elden Ring preferring self-punishment and discipline, as opposed to discipline or punishment at the hands of another. Eochaid, son of Urk, ruled for ten years and implemented the first Irish justice system, though his rule was ended by the Tuatha de Danann, and ultimately killed by the Morrigan, a supernatural Celtic being I believe to share connections with Merica, though that's a topic for another day. I have also hypothesized the Newman to share similarities with the Tuatha de Danann of Celtic mythology, so it's interesting to me to see a king named Eochaid was bested by the Tuatha the people I have previously likened to the Newman. The Dagda, one of the most powerful gods in Celtic mythology, has also been referred to as Eochaid the Allfather, among others. 
though this doesn't have much significance other than perhaps being another insight into From Software's choice to name a proudly ascetic people's homeland after a god typically considered to be the most powerful leader of the gods and the Tuatha. At the very least, it certainly seems safe to say that the land of Eochaid and Elden Ring is likely a reference to Ireland, specifically Ireland of the Ulster Cycle, a body of medieval Irish folk tales and legends. While doing research into Eochaid, I came across what is most likely the source of inspiration for Eochaid and its people, that being the Red Branch Knights of the Ulster. The Red Branch Knights were in service to the king of their province, though not to the king of Ireland. The knights were trained in the capital during the summer months in feats of arms as well as military science, and perhaps the magic battle skills of Elmer of the Briar are a reference to the Red Branch Knights' study of military science. The most famous of the Red Branch Knights was one with a name I won't even attempt to pronounce, though he does share some similarities with the Greek Heracles or Achilles, exhibiting incredible strength, durability, and endurance as he fought entire armies. While Elamur of the Briar did not fight an army, he did manage to conquer and defeat all those who opposed him at the Shaded Castle, demonstrating the strength he wields. Moreover, the Red Branch Knights and their Achilles-like warrior whose name meant Hound of Kulan also may provide more insight into the origins of Elamur and the bell-bearing hunter's abilities, as the Hound of Kulan's weapon is a version of the Sword of Light in Celtic mythology called the Hard-Headed Stealing, and is described as having shone at night like a candle, and that it could behead enemies without it touching them. Though not perfect, the hard-headed stealing is reminiscent of the manner in which the people of Eochaid do battle, as they do use weapons imbued with the copperish hue of a candle that can be used from a distance. Moreover, like the Hound of Kulon, Elamur of the Briar is a fierce warrior with an intense battle frenzy. Furthermore, the Red Branch Knights split and effectively fell apart after an act of treachery, with many of them fleeing in exile, which could parallel the actions of Eochaid people residing in the lands between. This could perhaps relate to the briar armor the denizens of Eochaid wear, as they may be demonstrations of their penance for past actions, perhaps past actions that led to the downfall of their homeland, though that's quite speculative. While we may not necessarily know what happened to the land of Eochaid, we do know that the equipment and armaments wielded by Elamur are from Eochaid aside from the Marai Executioner's sword, and that his armor and great shield were wound in thorns as punishment for his crimes. So, while the briars are not a sign of Elamur's punishment for betraying or leaving Eochaid, they do demonstrate he was punished by others, yet refused to accept his execution. As I mentioned before, I think this could be a choice that highlights the ascetic nature of the Eochaid people, as Elamur imposed his own penance by remaining in the emptied castle with the pain of the briars on his armor and solitude within the Shaded Castle. Another minor connection I wanted to attempt to make between Eochaid and the Red Branch Knights is that the Red Branch Knights love to make and reside within forts, and while definitely a stretch, perhaps the Shaded Castle is meant to reference the inspiration for Elamur. I also wonder if the Red Branch Sword Talisman could be a reference to this inspiration, and while I think it's still possible, the item appears to have more connection with the Helfen and Deathbirds, which I discussed more in depth in my video on the Helfen, the spirit world of Elden Ring. Another interesting possible British Isles connection is that of the Picts, who were devoutly religious, had a king named Eochaid, and in some time periods were considered almost synonymous with piracy and raids along British coastlines, which is of course reminiscent of Elamur attacking merchants on the fringes of the lands between. While Elden Ring certainly includes inspiration from the British Isles, it also certainly includes Japanese inspiration, and I wonder if Elamur is a twisted version of the red demon samurai, E. Naomasa. Naomasa distinguished himself from other generals with his courage and also political ability, earning him the prestigious role as one of the four guardians serving and protecting the legendary Tokugawa Ieyasu, shogun and one of the major unifiers of Japan. However, it is said that he had a rather disagreeable personality, and would often end up killing people, even over small mistakes. This included many of his subordinates, so it does not surprise me to hear that it earned him the nickname The Killing Machine, and that many of his followers defected to another of the four guardians, Honda Tagakatsu. So, while Elamur of the Briar shares many similarities with the Red Branch Knights of the Ulster Cycle and a religious devotion reminiscent of the Picts, 
I think the primary inspiration is likely the Red Demon Samurai, a prestigious noble who, despite everything afforded to him, has a disagreeable and antisocial disposition geared toward violence. It fits well with what we do know about Elamur the Briar, as he was likely employed by the Golden Order or House Mirai, though, through his murderous rampage, lost all respect and standing with those he served. A lot of these historical and mythical connections may not seem valid when parsed out like this, though I believe that all of these connections are a testament to the creative ability of From Software. They are a Japanese game company that, for a very long time, has been using stories, environments, and motifs from other cultures in masterful ways, combining them with Japanese culture, history, and mythology. Elden Ring in particular appears to have a more global inspiration than previous games, and perhaps this is largely due to the inclusion of George R.R. R. Martin in the creative process. It may be known now that Martin did not actually write the story of Elden Ring, though he did craft the foundation for the world building, the history of the lands between prior to our entrance as a tarnished of no renown. Hidetaka Miyazaki has even been quoted saying he had a great deal of fun taking the ideas that Martin put forth and breaking them in an attempt to turn them into mishap and grotesque monsters, and even said I think Martin might be a bit shocked. Miyazaki may not have used the exact details and ideas that Martin put forth, though that does not mean Martin's DNA is nowhere to be found in this game. There's a great deal of Celtic inspiration in Elden Ring that can be likely attributed to Martin, or to Miyazaki's love for Martin's works. Martin is also known to use Celtic history and mythology in his writing, so it wouldn't be too surprising for there to be some lingering inspiration in design and name choice. While Elamur and Aochade exist within a Japanese game, they clearly take inspiration from Celtic sources, primarily of the name Aochade, Red Branch Knights, and the Picts. Though, those sources of inspiration are not all that contributed to the final product of Elamur and the references to Aochade and Elden Ring. As there was almost undoubtedly a source of inspiration such as the Red Demon Samurai, a historical figure that would arguably be more recognizable and familiar to a Japanese developer as well as Japanese audiences. Elamur and Aochade appear to be a melding of many sources of inspiration, and that kind of combinatorial creativity is one of the primary reasons I have such a deep adoration for this game. They managed to combine several cultural, historical, and mythological sources to create something wholly unique, a hallmark of originality. Elamur of the Briar, the Red Demon Knight of Aochade. Thanks for watching.